couple all of our patrons by the way are going to get a couple features this week that uh, you can participate in if you join the patreon um first is we will unveil the full feed so right now if you go back in the uh, megaphone feed as i'll call it the public feed that you get in apple you only get 400 episodes i capped it at that everything from 2018 on um everything from 2018 on was more academic than the the older days um, not that I'm ashamed of the, I'm not ashamed of anybody else in the older days. Let me put it that way. I'm ashamed of me, uh, pre two at 2018. Um, so we put that behind the paywalls and, and there's like three, four, 500. I think the feed that you get on public is 400. And the feed that if you subscribe to the Patreon that you get will be about a thousand. So there's like 600 other shows that you're missing if you're not a patron. So $5 a month and up, and you can join the Patreon, and you can get access to the full feed. Secondly, um, there was an article that I shared this week about the Substack revolution and uh, how the the media, the the panic, the panic, the pandemic, and everything is uh, slowly destroying the news business, which I don't agree with. It's destroying the... Uh, the centralization of the news business and anybody who believes that media bias is a problem should appreciate that there is a decentralization of news taking place. And we're heading back to a time like the 1800s when news was identified by its bias, the Rushville Republican, the Corden Democrat, the, the, these newspapers told you exactly where they stood when they were started in the 1800s. And instead of this uh, faux notion of the media having no bias and we're, we're straightforward and objective without bias uh, towards either side, all that all that's going away because individual journalists like Matt, Matt Taibbi, all the dispatch guys, they're all leaving institutions and starting their own. You saw Andrew Sullivan leave the, uh, the New Yorker and now he's or, or New York Magazine, whichever one for Substack. And the guy went from making $200,000 to $500,000 a month <laughs> or a year or whatever. Something crazy. Right. And so individual journalists are starting their own outlets. I didn't want to go work for anybody. I wanted to be my own person who could, could do things the way that I wanted to do it, talk with the people I wanted to talk with, have the co-hosts that I wanted to co-host with, and not be beholden to reason standards or National Review standards or the Washington Post standards. I wanted to do my own thing, and I started We Are Libertarians twelve years or uh, in, in 2012 to achieve what where we're headed. And so, but tools change, and there there are things changing. And this Substack system is really awesome. And I've been thinking about leaving social media for two to three years, like deleting all of We Are Libertarians and my personal stuff off of social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, pay, you know. All of its uh, minds, everything, except Parlor, because of our good friend Renzo. Um, <laughs> but uh, I just, I think Harry said it best. It's killing us, mm -hmm. Harry. You hate social media. You're not even on it anymore. Tell us why. Because it's killing you. All right. So, like the algorithm messes with you. Facebook has gone on record that the the messed with the algorithm to see if they could do like experiments on people. Um, also, the way the algorithm changes, it also depends on your active searches and where you are. This is what some fun you can have with VPNs is just switch your city with a VPN and just watch how your searches just change or just your search engine, you know, like search for something in Google and then open up DuckDuckGo or uh, DMZ or Yahoo. Just pick different search engines. All these different things are like are messing with your brain based off the cookies from your Facebook, Instagram, or your uh, whatever TikTok feature you're on this week. I am positive you're recording on your uh, your computer mic, by the way. And, and so I don't know that I would close everything down, but I probably would end active participation. I'm still thinking about it, so I may change my mind, and I may do it, and then change my mind as I do. Um, but uh, there, there's this great, and let me see if I can pull this up because I thought it was such a good explanation of the problem of social media um, and doing what I do and what I want to do full time. Um, but this was a great clip that I'm going to play for you uh, in just one moment. So this is the 
Uh, this is Jeffrey Goldberg talking to Tahanishi Coates. So this is obviously some sort of liberal conspiracy. Uh, so I, I'm just warning you, please don't grab your uh, your uh, fainting pearls and, and uh, freak out. That, But I think this is, if you're doing political opinion, as we do here on We Are Libertarians, I think uh, Tahanishi Coates makes a great point as to why he does not do Twitter. So check this out question that's probably from jack dorsey um will you ever come back to twitter and or other social channels <laughs> no it's actually from somebody else not jack dorsey. okay no um what do you mean no 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 never never say never no i'm saying never <laughs> really yeah I mean, this is on the record yeah i'll never i'll never do that again no why talk about it um, I think it goes back to what we were talking about before, like this idea of, um, first of all, I had fun on Twitter. It's very fun. It's a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and I, I miss it. I wish I could beat it. I really do. Um, but I think part of maturity is understanding what is good for you and what is not good for you. And I don't think it was good for me. I am not making a... Um, declaration about Twitter that I think holds true for all other Twitter users. I I'm talking about me. Um, I'm a person that's, you know, sort of slow, as I said, that likes the nuance of things, that likes books, you know, that likes, you know, the space and the time to think that, you know, um, enjoys slowing things down, you know, a little bit that, you know, writes things that I think, um, or tries to write things you think Twitter is bad for you or bad for society or both? I'm hesitant to say it's bad for society. I think it's bad for me. And I suspect that it's bad for writers like me. In other words, writers who do what I do, I think it's probably not good for them. Um, it's not good. Like one of the, it's not good to be able to have an opinion for someone like me, someone like me who already has a voice, who already has a platform, um, it's not good for me to be able to just immediately vent whatever opinion I had while I was drinking coffee that morning with my wife. That's not good. You know, um, what do I know? Have I thought about it? Have I batted around back and forth? Have I read about it? But you're you a know? guy, you're a guy who, when you were much less famous, you were blogging and your method of blogging was to take people inside your mind and mm -hmm. say, this is what I'm thinking about right now. Mm -hmm. I don't know the answer that that doesn't have any appeal anymore? Yeah, but I had a really controlled check on that and that was my, my comment section, um, which was a really curated group of people who could push back and forth and go you know, all different ways. And sometimes I could highlight their opinions and say, you know, I thought this yesterday, but X, Y, and Z person said this. You know, in Twitter, you know, you're, you're in a situation where like, not only can you not see the person, you don't have any established relationship with the person, um, communication, I think, I think, again, you know, I'm hesitant to make grand pronouncements, but I think it's really, really based on, there has to be some shared something, you know? Um, I think anonymity is probably bad in terms of the things people will say to each other. Um, I think that's the first thing. And then I think, you know, even within anonymity, there can be, you know, some sort of relationship, the lack of real relationship, I think the things, you know, sometimes people say that they would not say if they were sitting next to each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's tough. I mean, whatever I write in my articles, you know what I mean? Um, I have no problem saying, you know, to people, you know what I mean? If I wrote something about, you know, President Obama when he was, you know, in office, you know, and I had to go into a room and I had no problem talking to him. I had no problem repeating it at all. You know, um, a little nervous about it, but I could do it. <laughs> You know, I could do it. You know what I mean? Um, when you start like singing things, you know, about people calling in a way that, you know, if y'all were sitting next to each other, you just wouldn't do it. You just wouldn't do it. I, I, I don't know. And I think maybe the platform lends itself to people doing that. Now, maybe that people would better control, you know, X, Y, mm -hmm. and Z. You know, um, somebody like me shouldn't be. I shouldn't be there. I shouldn't be in that room. I love this so much that I cut that video out and put it on my personal YouTube. Um, what, what are your reactions to what he was saying? Let's start with Harry. All right. Uh, I see what he's talking about. 
Now, me personally, I love anonymity online, but with Twitter, that is true. Like you can put this opinion out, this unprocessed opinion, and then you will can get hit by fifty to hundred people who you have no idea who are, who even either they do want to spar a good situation and want to talk about something, or they're just a bad actor and just like, no, I'm gonna run. I want to ruin your day because this is how I make my day happy. It's that weird disposition that I. That's why I dislike Twitter. Like I, I have it there because, you know, it's a good way to host my PG Peaky, and I've got an account there, so no one can just create like, oh, this comes from Harry. Nope, my account's just there, so someone can't say, oh, I saw Harry post this on Twitter. Nope, that wasn't me. That's see, my account hasn't tweeted anything. That's why I've got Twitter. That's why I still keep the account there. Um, Reinhold, you got to unmute yourself. Let's get it together, guys. I will fire you from your free jobs. <laughs> we need to get back. See, this is why, you know, we got to get back in the studio. <laughs> I know. Yeah, where I have all the control. Yeah, Reinhold had had some mic issues earlier. He was he was messing with it. I'll give you my my um and just you know, Reinhold, when you think you got to just speak up and we'll we'll let you know. But I loved this. And I loved it what whenever I posted this in uh let's see here. Uh, 2018, March of 2018. <laughs> um, you know, because I think if anybody has listened to We Are Libertarians for the, the run of this show for nine years, you've heard me growing up. <laughs> you've heard me becoming more mature, taking the responsibility that has been handed to me by this audience more seriously. And I'm not going to pretend that this is some giant audience, but it's a big audience and I do have some influence over people. And the more seriously I take that responsibility of what I say into this microphone and how it impacts you on the other side, the more people listen and the more people trust what you're saying. And I, I take that very seriously and I'm very honored by that. And part of the problem that I have is like him, I'm impulsive, you know, I'm not, not uh, like impulsive, like the president, but like I'm impulsive, right? Like mm -hmm. I posted the Brianna Taylor article and someone just didn't read it. And I told him he was a fucking idiot. Like, I mean, he's objectively being a fucking idiot. Right. But should I say that? That's not nice. You know, and sometimes a uh, part of what I, what I want to get to is, I really, I love and hate social media, right? It's given me a career. We've used organic reach on social media to grow this audience. We we no longer have that ability on social media because the pages, if I want to get you to look, to see anything from We Are Libertarians on Instagram and Facebook, I have to enrage you. I have to outrage you. I can't post a thoughtful comment and I'm going to remove Reinhold. He's, he's really freaking me out. Um, <laughs> just, just his eye in the, in the video. Um, we live stream this Saturday mornings usually. So check, uh, check uh, round nine on Saturday mornings, Eastern. Um, so I love it because it's given me a career. It's given me every job I've had. I've learned to market, you know, on social media and, and build what we have here, you know, but, increasingly because of the clampdowns that social media is making because of the Russian propaganda stuff and threatening legislation and all that, it's increasing the amount of outrage I have to build to get attention. It's incentivizing people to be awful. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's healthy for me. And I get tired of like waking up out of a coma after 30 minutes and going, why did I just, I have thousands of books I want to read. Why did I just read the opinions of people who haven't read anything and don't know anything? They're just telling you their gut reaction. Then it's totally uninformed. Why would I, why would I read these people when I could go spend my time reading a person who put work into a research paper or a book that will then enrich this audience? But the serotonin hit of being and wasting that 30 minutes or an hour it's addictive. It's addictive to me. It's addictive to you. And then as you read all this stuff and you think things through, you post stuff because I like to think in public so then we can discuss it. But then in the comment sections, again, I'm talking to people. I have put thought into this. I have read. I've done research. I spend hours a day prepping for this moment for these two hours a week. 
And the output of that is on my social media. And I'm thinking and researching and making connections. And then I write something and I spend 30 minutes writing it. And then the person who hasn't read anything and hasn't thought anything through then just looks at what I say and goes, nah, <laughs> I read something on PJ media that totally negates your 20 years of experience and, and the, the hours that you spend on this. I just don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> like, I don't, I wanna, but I love writing and I love talking to people and I love sharing the output of the research that I put into this show. I love the community that we are libertarians and my personal social media has built and I don't want to give that up. And that's why I've never left social media. Um, I, I, I think over time you do change people's minds. I've definitely changed people's minds, but you know, something like Substack gives me the ability to build a private wall and put up things as I'm thinking these things through headed towards this show. And you can comment on it and we can have a conversation within the Substack website. And I just think it might be healthier for us and for me. And so, you know, I, I've, I, I want to test the thread. So on uh, debate night on the 29th, I'm going to post a link to the sub stack that I've been putting together. And uh, everybody is free to come and chat back and forth with each other around the presidential debate. And you can sign up for the email and, uh, you know, get, get probably a daily email from me at, that we can all then, you know, have a conversation about what I found, what I'm thinking. I can hear what you think. We can have a conversation about it. But like the quick take stuff and, and all that, I just don't know that I want to do that anymore. Like I just don't, it's exhausting, right? Hold. Right. And so there's different ways of looking at social media as well. So I can give you an example. Um, <clears throat> I was doing a lot of writing for uh, a website called Watchblog. And Watchblog was actually a pretty popular place back in the uh, early 2000s, 2004, 2005, when I first got started in it. It was 2004, um, writing for it. And um, it had a lot going for it to had a, like a three column format where you had left and right in the middle, all on the same front page and everybody could see each other's articles. And there's a lot of cross communication and we had kind of a good following. We we're getting a lot of views. And then the owner decided to sell to, um, because he got out of politics, decided to sell the website. Uh, but the one thing that we were always complaining about is that we didn't have options for sharing our articles to, uh, social media automatically like we would be able to you know like today you just you know you, you you write an article for a blog and it automatically posts links to 12 different social media sites and um, that draws people to the content um, so it refused to do that and then it ended up just dying on the vine because no one knew about the website anymore because no one's going to google to search for things anymore they're getting all of this information from their social media feed so i think social media is more of an advertising platform than a communication or a conversational platform anymore, yeah which right? is why so, I, don't, I don't think you can leave social media completely and you can right. post your stuff and say hey here's my thoughts on this here and and you're going to get a fraction of the people because it let's say we have a hundred thousand likes on our facebook page our reach right now is four million people so our, we, our weekly reach through this election season on We Are Libertarians' Facebook page is 4 million people. That's not insignificant. That's a tremendous amount of power because 4 million people are seeing what you're saying. And we debate. You heard our debate three weeks ago, how to use that power responsibly. You know, And like yesterday when Ron Paul had his medical incident on video, I... I I wanted to set a tone, right? Because I didn't, I don't know what happened medically. So I didn't want to say what I think happened medically. Right. You know, I didn't want to, um, you know, I have my differences of opinion on minor things with, with Ron Paul, but like overall, I respect the man. Like I love the man. He's been important to me in my life and he's important. Hell, hella important to the libertarian movement. But he I want to even being, yeah. 
Yeah, and I wanted to use the reach of our social media to set a tone, and that was recognized, and we were putting, like, that tweet was embedded in the Washington Examiner. Like, I, I, like I, I'm, an, I'm an old member of the libertarian community at this point, and, and uh, you know, like, I think there's benefits to being on social media because you can help lead people in a better direction. You can help people think, like, I'm not a political, I'm, I, I am not a political consultant anymore. I don't do that. I'm not interested in doing this because I'm I'm here to simp for the Libertarian Party. You know, like I, I'm here to make you think. And provocation can make you think with with but but like outrage doesn't, you know, and there's a difference. And you have to be on social media to drive people to what you're doing, but there's limits to it. Like, is it the appropriate place to post? deeper thoughts or have a conversation with people. And, and I, I, I don't necessarily think so, but we have the benefit of being number one in Apple's search for podcasts when somebody types in libertarian, right? Like there's, you know, we could make a pitch for more patrons to sign up or increase their monthly donations. So we could then buy Google ads, right? Like, which can drive a lot of people or, you know, so there, there's ways that we could increase without necessarily being, front and center there all the time um and i recognize that there's a risk once you go off platform and not actively participating and you're just kind of dead you're shooting your stuff out there you're not you're not gonna get the uh the the, the drive like twitter literally i run major twitter accounts with hundreds of thousands of people and you post a, tw a twitter link and you literally get 10 people clicking <laughs> like it's it, it's not a great driver of of things so Right. I've got like 50, you know, 50 followers on my end. So, you know, I'm not out there driving a lot of traffic for myself as it were, but yeah, the, 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 the problem with social media and I think you guys kind of hit on a little bit too uh, earlier, but I didn't hear the whole conversation, but it, it, you get sucked in at a point where you start wasting time. Like there's a, a productivity issue where, you can be productive using social media if you use it right. But if you get sucked into these arguments and these back and forth with people who aren't serious about having honest debate, you can waste hours of your day. Mm -hmm. When you do that, how, what could you have done in those two? I could have written an article in those in that time. Right. Or, mm -hmm. or pushed out, you know, uh, a quick uh, clip of some audio or something. You know, There's stuff that I could have done in that time where I'm like, why am I wasting my time? arguing with these people who are just pr being purposely obtuse. I, I'm spending my time arguing with people that dozens of people might see it and neglecting what might improve the information that millions can see or hundreds can listen to or that, you know, so I don't know. But what I'm asking for is twofold. First, watch for the debate for that email. I'll send it out everywhere. Participate, sign up. Um, it's chrisspangle.substack.com. Make sure you check out our websites. Sign up for our email newsletters. Um, we send out a morning email newsletter with a bunch of news from libertarian sources, and it's a, it's a great newsletter. Um, the best called the Libertarian Aurora. Start finding ways to engage. You know, subscribe to this podcast. Make sure you hit subscribe. Subscribe to the email newsletter. Check our websites daily. Um, we are libertarians.com and libertyexplained.com. Tons of great stuff. And that's where I'd like to, you know, focus more of my time than than social media. So if you follow me on any of these platforms, you follow We Are Libertarians, start moving over to the stuff that that we quote unquote own as opposed to giving the the, the revenue and the clicks and everything to social media, right? Shut up, Harry. Harry's laughing at <laughs> You own your email list. Yes, I know. Mailchimp could kill us any day now. Oh, no, 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 but 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 long as you have email addresses, you're fine because that's protocol. Yes, right. So signing up for a the most important thing is if you love, if you are serious about ending media bias, if you are serious about seeing, you have to incentivize creators financially. You have to go sign up for our Patreon. You have to go sign up for the Patreon or Substack of other people that you like. Like you have to support independent journalists because the more that they see revenue and a living can be made elsewhere, other people are going to go, I'm done buying into the to the uh, the centralized power of the Washington Post 
and I'm going to go start my own and we'll get a ton of great, interesting. There's a ton of great, interesting journalism out there. It's just that you won't click on it because it's attached to the New York Times and you think they're bad because you are propagandized by a president. So, you know, it, there is got like go to longform.com or longreads.com. You'll see so much great journalism. And a lot of those people are patron are, are, are have a patron in a magazine or a newspaper um, or a radio network or whatever. Or some of them are independent like us. But you have to start financially incentivizing a different type of media model if you want to see that. So with that being said, stay tuned for that. Um, I want to talk about Brianna Taylor. I don't know that we're going to get to Amy Coney Barrett today just for the sake of time. Um, but uh, 